Okay guys, so we're going to start by looking at a bit of the potted history of the 604, uh, sorry, the 605. Um, it was introduced in 2005 as a development of the Challenger 604, or more strictly speaking, the CL600 2B16. Uh, and it's worthy to note that the 605 does carry the same uh, TCO, uh, the, the same type certificate designation as the CL600 2B16. The main difference between the 604 and the 605 was the upgraded avionics system, which now is the Proline 21 suite, which gives um, much more enhanced capabilities, much better graphics, and generally much more user friendly. On the outside, to the layman, the 604 and the 605 look very similar, but there is a very easy way of telling the 605 over the 604, and that's looking at the tail cone. Uh, as well as the tail cone, we also have larger cabin windows to uh, enhance the customer experience. Visually, it's very easy to tell the difference between a 604 and a 605. You just need to look at the tail cone. You'll see on the picture on the left, the 604, very straight vertical tail cone, whereas the 605's got, some, got a very rounded tail cone, um, plus um, much larger passenger windows. So, we, as we said, the um, 605 avionics is, the, is based around the Collins Proline 21 package. Now this um, includes four much larger 10 by 12 inch LCD screens. They're much larger than what's on the 604, which are also CRT screens, so the picture quality is that much better. The basic architecture behind the scenes is very similar, if not identical to the Proline 4. That is, in the avionics bay, in the avionics bay, we've got the IAX car cage with modules slotted inside. That side of it is pretty much the same. But because we've got the uh, LCD screens, screens and the graphics capability is that much better, we do that does allow us to have enhanced features such as charts display. The other difference then is how we interface all the information with the crew and how the crew navigates through the various options. So we've got a different panel, we've got the cursor control panel, which replaces the old ICAS control panel. So this is the main panel, this cursor panel that the um, crew use to navigate through all the various options on the screens, which kind of uses like a Windows drop-down menu type system. And we'll look, a bit, we'll look at that a bit in more detail a bit later on. So here's a screenshot of the flight deck and the instrument panel. So as you can see, much nicer, much bigger display screens. The picture quality is excellent. Less cluttered instrument panel. Um, you also notice down the on the centre uh, console, there are no radio tuning units or RTUs. The radios are tuned using the FMS CDUs, or there's an option on the actual MFD screen at the top. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the comm system. But overall, a much better presented uh, information to the crew. So here we can see everything. We can see the overhead panel, the autopilot control panel, the main instrument panel, and the two side consoles and the center console. Um, so main instrument panel, as we said, nice and clear, these four display screens. They've got rid of the analog uh, standby instruments, and we've got a electronic standby instrument system. The little display screen you can see underneath, that's the clock. So they've got rid of those two uh, clocks on the pilot and co-pilot side. You've just got this digital clock in the center. Down the center pedestal, no RTUs, just the FMS CDUs. Uh, side consoles are pretty much the same as they are on the 604. The overhead panel is pretty much the same on the 604. And so is the uh, autopilot control panel on the gear shield. There's, a, there's one other additional feature as well, and that's the um, electronic flight bag, which you can see the touchscreen controller there, uh, where it's currently displaying the charts. And uh, this uh, touchscreen controller 
um, can also control other things and give access to the cabin electronic system as well if the if the flight attendants one is uh, control panel is not working okay don't really mention need to mention too much on here because it's pretty much the same as the 604 as i said we're, we're without the um uh, rtus same on the pilot and co-pilot side consoles they're pretty much the same as it is on the um, 604 and the other panel the overhead panel uh, that's the same as well So the screens are identified as the two outboard screens are primary flight displays. The two inboard screens are multi MFDs or multi-function displays. And we've only got full screens to worry about, but we've got some reversionary capability. So if screens start to play up, we can start to manipulate the information, swap it all around and have it presented on a different screen. So we have an ICAS um, reversionary panel um, or display reversionary panel. Uh, if we take a look at the top picture, so the left displays are dis the switches in the normal position. The ICAS display um, is the positions are both PFDs, left MFD or right MFD, and then the right hand displays is in the normal position, in the, and then we've got PFD reversion or MFD reversion. So here we've uh, put the switch to both PFDs. <clears throat> so it gets a little bit confusing how they've identified these uh, uh, switch labels and it's probably a good idea if you get a chance to get, just go out and have a play yourself and you'll get a feel of how they uh, set things up. But if you put the ICAS screen to the both PFDs, what you're kind of telling the system to do is, where do I want the ICAS? Well, normally you'd have it on the left MFD. You can also have it on the right MFD. And in this case, we're going to display it on both PFDs. So what happens on the PFDs, as we can see from the picture, the actual PFD portion, the primary flight display, gets compressed. So all the information is still there. So all your attitude, heading, airspeed, altitude, and all the rest of it, like you see on a normal PFD, that gets compressed a little bit. And the ICAS display, that's all your engine indication system, that gets compressed into a little window at the top. Coming down to the bottom of the screen, this time we've got um, the left display switch has been set to MFD reversion. Um, so, we, in other words, you want the PFD information to, to be displayed on in the in this case on the pilot's MFD, the left MFD. So you get a compressed PFD. Now you never want to get rid of your engine information, so that also gets compressed. And then the other PFD and the other MFD are just left to however it was. So there's multiple ways of configuring the screens to display what you want. It depends what screens failed. And also depends on who's flown the airplane as to what information they want in front of them. So here we've selected, on the display selector, we've set, selected a left PFD to the PFD reversion position. Now, um, when you do that, it will blank the on-side MFD, in other words, the left MFD in this case. If the MFD was showing ICAS, we never want to get rid of that. So if it was showing ICAS, then the ICAS information is automatically moved to the functioning MFD. So you always have it on display. You'll never get rid of the ICAS. It'll either be compressed onto the PFD, compressed onto an MFD, or in this case, shifted over to... Uh, another MFD. So this is the um, the ICAS in full view, so to speak. So it's not compressed or anything, and it's exactly the same information you'd have on the ICAS primary page on the 604. So on your engine parameters, N1, ITT, N2. Then you've got fuel flow, oil pressure, oil temp, fan vibration. The fuel information down there at the bottom. In the centre to the centre of the screen, you've got all your trim information, flaps, gear position, cabin pressurisation, and the APU if it was running. And then you've got your um, uh, all your cast messages. This is a compressed ICAS view. So this is the view you get when it, when the ICAS information is compressed onto another screen. Um, all the information is there; it's just being squashed up. 
uh, to make use of the space. So everything is still there. Um, uh, the N1 is in a, in a gauge and digital format, but everything else is being compressed into digital format. Because the N1, from the crew's perspective, is probably the most important thing, because uh, it's an indication of thrust. Uh, but everything else has been, been kind of digitized without any gauges. Um, they're just trying to squash things up to make the best use of the small space available. So here's all our synoptic pages. You don't get any more additional synoptic pages than over the, on the 605 compared to the 604. It's exactly the same. Um, obviously, we're going to select them using the cursor control panel rather than the ICAS control panel. And as you can see, you can have drop down. You can, um, uh, if you press the uh, menu button, you can get a drop down menu. You can select what what uh, you have on display. Um, the only thing you can do on this that you can't do really, or have limited capability on the 604 is you can you can have sort of multiple synoptics displayed at the same time just by using the different boxes on the uh, box areas on the MFDs. And you've got a total of four boxes you could use. Well, three really because you, you always have an ICAS um, and you can have say the AC electrical and the hydraulic page up or whatever um, so you can have multiple synoptic pages displayed but there are no additional synoptic pages one synoptic page I think is sorely missed on the Challenger the 604 and the 605 is a fuel synoptics it's strange that with such a complicated fuel system in terms of main fuel tanks, auxiliary tanks, tail tanks, they don't have a synoptic for it, but there they are. They know what they're doing, and that's how they've designed it. This is the summary page, which provides an overall summary of the aircraft. So fuel, uh, electrical, AC and DC, cabin pressurization information, and hydraulic system information, in a summary of, of what's going on on the airplane. It's kind of taking a snapshot of the overall status of the aeroplane. Okay, this is where there's a subtle difference between the 604 and the 605 in that on the 605 all the CAS messages are displayed on one display effectively in the CAS window box. And so you get all your warning, caution, advisory and status messages displayed on one screen rather than uh, on the 604 it kind of spilt you have a um, warnings and cautions on one screen and status and advisories on another. Here it's all in one list, all in order, so warnings at the top, then cautions, advisories and finally status. Obviously we can have, like we've got here, multiple messages being displayed that, that use up all the space, so they will spill over into second and, or even three pages. Uh, obviously the newest message will always go to the top, of its respective list. So you, you should always see the most recent message. It's not going to disappear at the bottom of the list out of view. And it then just shunts everything down one. And so some messages may come hidden and spill over onto second pages. You can always bring those pages into view by pushing the cast button on the uh, cursor control panel. And that will scroll over through the pages. <coughs> this is a PFD. So, except that this is not a normal view of a PFD. This has got this has been compressed. So you've got a compressed ICAS at the top, a compressed PFD section in the middle with your attitude, vertical speed, and altitude, and all the rest of it. Then underneath you've got this other window. In this case, it's showing the summary page. Uh, but you could have um, you could select what you have in that lower window, but it all gets compressed. So on the MFD, when they function as purely an MFD, no, no PFD information is on there, so purely an MFD, you've got these basically three windows. The radio tuning window, that's always there, it's always going to be at the top, and an upper window, and a lower window. And then you can just choose how you have the information displayed using those different windows yeah. and the uh, cursor control panel to select what information you want on which window. You can see there, bottom row, second one along from the left, but that's using two windows to combine a map view. Uh, but you pretty much you're very flexible, you can you can um, uh, just choose what you want to have displayed. 
So how do you select what you want on the displays? Well that's done through the drop down menus that we can see here that pop up on the screen and you use a combination of the display control panel and the cursor control panel to navigate your way through all these various options that you can have and how the screens are formatted and what's being displayed on the screens etc etc. The other difference on the 605 is we haven't got hardware for a hardware control panel for the weather radar. So the weather ra radar controls are all done through a drop down menu on the uh, PFD. Um, so that, that's where your controls, that's how you turn it on, that's how you select what mode you're in and um, what, what, how the radar f is functioning using the drop down menus and the cursor panel. So this shot just shows you the drop down menus interview and the different uh, modes that you've got and how it appears on the screen. So you've got the weather mode, you have weather and turbulence being displayed, you can have turbulence mode only, um, and then a map mode where it has your uh, flight plan 